Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to be setting up a new user on a Linux hosting server. In our case, it will be a digital ocean droplet that we configured in a previous tutorial. And then we'll just be making sure that the user has an SSH key available so that they can log in directly from the terminal without any passwords. Uh, and we don't need to do any other configuration. So the problem that we've got is uh, most servers when they're configured, uh, they don't give you any other access other than the root user. And we don't want to be using the root user for day to day tasks and setting bar software, uh, not only because you might get uh, ownership and permission problems, uh, but generally we want to keep that uh, secure and safe and only be using for certain administration tasks. So with our DigitalOcean droplet, we can actually just log directly on there with the SSH key uh, that has been provided to the root user, uh, but we need to create a new user to do all those day-to-day -day tasks. So we do that with the add user command and we're just going to create a new user. Uh, in this case, I'll call them George. So we run add user and then the username, and that will create that user for us. And we just create a password for the new user. So let me just enter a password here. And of course, you can put in a full name uh, for them as well, uh, and all the other things that a Linux uh, user re is requesting, but we don't need to fill in all of the specific details. So with that done, we've created the user, uh, but probably what you want for the user is to be able to run sudo commands so that you can actually uh, install software and do elevated uh, things as the root user would. So uh, we're just going to run the add user command again and just make sure they're part of the uh, sudo group as well. Uh, so that'll just allow the user to uh, run those sudo commands. So with that in place, what we want to then look at is how the user can log on to the server because at the moment they've got a password set up. But if we go back and try and log in with that user to this server, uh, what you'll find is that we can't. And that's because this server is only configured to use uh, SSH keys uh, and not passwords. So we get a permission denied uh, problem, which is maybe something that you've come across and you want to resolve with your particular server setup. And of course we could enable password authentication, but that would open up more problems and obviously make the server more insecure. So what we're going to do is stick with SSH, but we're just going to set up an SSH key for George. And we're going to use the same one that the root user has. So we'll look at copying that key and then I'll explain how you can use another key or why that might make sense in your case. So let's log back on as the root user. So there should be a new home folder for the George user that we created. Uh, it is empty but the, there is the folder there. So what we want to do, uh, actually we'll just navigate into there with the cd command, is we want to create a new ssh folder. So we'll say uh, make a new directory of ssh. And what we want to do is get the authorized key that the uh, root user already has and copy that across to George. Now, the reason why this makes sense uh, for most people is because chances are uh, the root user and the additional user that we're setting up here are the same person as they would be for me. And we're going to just use the same SSH key uh, that's available on the local machine. Uh, but of course, you can use a different one if you like. And I'll show you exactly where you need to put that key if you do want to use a different one. Uh, but what we're going to do is copy the from the root folder. Uh, there's an SSH uh, folder in there. And there's this file in there called authorized keys, which if we just actually have a quick look at that, uh, you'll see is the public key uh, for the corresponding private key on my local machine. Uh, so we just want to take that and then copy it into George's home folder. So instead of logging it out this time, let's actually uh, copy it into George's home folders uh, or into his SSH folder at least. Uh, so we're currently in George's home folder. So we just want to make sure that goes into his SSH folder. And if we have a look inside there now, we should find we've got that file uh, of authorized keys and it's got the same public key in there. So that should be sufficient, but we just want to make sure that we've got all the permissions set up correctly for uh, George's home folder. So you can see here at the moment, because we're logged in as the root user, uh, the uh, SSH folder is owned by the root user, which again is another reason why you probably don't want to log in uh, as the root user all the time. So for uh, this uh, SSH folder, we're just going to make sure that the uh, ownership is set to George um, for uh, that .ssh folder. And if we just look at that again, you can see now George owns that SSH uh, folder there. And you can run into some errors if the permissions for this folder and file aren't set correctly. So uh, what we're going to do for uh, the SSH folder is we're just going to, to change the file permissions uh, for uh, the .ssh folder to 700 
uh, which basically means that uh, George should be the only person that uh, is allowed to do anything with it. So one final thing inside of the SSH folder. Uh, so let's just have a look here. We've got that authorized key uh, file, but you can see uh, that the permissions for that file are actually set as 600, and that is the correct file permissions for it. So uh, it basically means that George has the ability to read and write that file, but no one else on the system can actually do anything with that authorized keys file and, and, and tamper with it and make any changes. So just worth double checking that that authorized key uh, file has the correct permissions on it. Uh, but if we actually log off the server now, just by saying exit, and if we just try and log in again uh, with uh, George as the username, uh, what we should find is that the SSH private key uh, from my local machine is used in the same way that it would be used with the root user and then we can log on to the server uh, with the George's user and uh, as you can see from the terminal prompt that we're now logged in as George and any actions that we do from this point on uh, will be all registered under his account. So yeah, that's nice and simple, just a quick way to actually add a new user and it should work on any Linux hosting platform that you've got. And it's just a case of making sure that you create the user and also add them to the sudo as list. And if you want to enable SSH access for them, then you should obviously make sure that you copy the correct uh, public key into their authorized keys uh, folder, uh, file in their SSH folder. And of course, if you did want to use a different SSH key, not the one that's the same as the root user, then when you hit that point of looking at the authorized keys uh, in that uh, SSH folder, uh, you just replace this public key uh, with whatever public key that you want to use that corresponds to the private key that you're using. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've learned something about setting up new users on a Linux hosting platform. And if you're in a jam with trying to get the SSH key for a new user set up, hopefully that's clarified where the key needs to go and how you might copy uh, the root user's key as well. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.